On a clear morning, Japan Airlines Flight 350 took off from Fukuoka, carrying 166 passengers toward the bustling capital of Tokyo. But none of them knew the dark fate that awaited them. As the plane prepared to land, the captain's sudden, inexplicable actions turned the dream of a safe arrival into a terrifying nightmare. Engineer, quick, please help me! This bastard's gone crazy! The plane hurtled toward Tokyo Bay in a desperate race against time that no one could have foreseen. What made an experienced pilot become the source of this disaster? Did the co-pilot have enough courage to save the lives of 166 passengers from the jaws of death? Join us as we explore these questions in today's story, the story of Japan Airlines, Flight 350. Seven a.m., February 9, nineteen eighty-two, Fukuoka Airport, Fukuoka Prefecture, Japan. The McDonnell Douglas DC-861, an upgraded version of the DC-8, was being refueled, preparing for a one-point-five-hour domestic flight from Fukuoka International Airport to Haneda International Airport. This was JAL Flight 350, operated by Japan Airlines, renowned as one of the world's largest and most prestigious airlines. Beyond its reputation for high-quality service and passenger comfort, Japan Airlines was known for its exceptional pilots, meticulously selected and rigorously trained. These pilots were not only skilled in aircraft operation but also equipped to handle emergencies with composure. This was crucial in ensuring flight safety and maintaining Japan Airlines' status as a leading airline. The aircraft for today's flight, the McDonnell Douglas DC-861, while not exactly ancient, had been in service for over 15 years, accumulating 36,955 flight hours, yet was still trusted by Japan Airlines. This model was equipped with Pratt & Whitney JT 3D3B engines, giving it a range of approximately 4,475 miles and a capacity of 210 to 259 passengers. Its large capacity and long-range capabilities made the DC-861 ideal for transcontinental and international flights. A total of 174 people boarded the plane, including 166 passengers and 8 crew members. In the cockpit were three relatively young pilots. At the helm was 35-year-old Captain Seiji Katagiri, who had been with Japan Airlines since October 1, 1969. By this point, Katagiri had amassed a total of 5,698 flight hours, including 448 hours on DC-8 aircraft. Alongside him was 33-year-old First Officer Yoshifumi Ishikawa, also serving as the flight's monitoring pilot. He had 3,391 flight hours under his belt, but only 186 of those were on the DC-8. Also present was the flight engineer, 48-year-old Yoshimi Ozaki, the oldest and most experienced member of the crew. He had a total of 6,560 flight hours, with 3,564 of those on DC-8s. Before we officially start today's journey, there is one thing I need you to pay attention to, which is the condition of Captain Katagiri. Although he passed the health check before boarding the plane, it seems that the main pilot of today's flight is having some kind of problem. He was unable to concentrate during the pre-flight meeting and sat with his head in his hands for quite some time before heading to where the DC-8 was parked. Let's explore this pilot's history a bit further. Around November 1980, over a decade into his career at Japan Airlines, Katagiri requested and was granted a year-long medical leave due to health issues. 
Specifically, Katagiri had been diagnosed with depression after experiencing a deteriorating mental state. He frequently felt his home was under surveillance with hidden cameras, and suspected his phone calls were being tapped. The Tokyo police repeatedly visited his residence but found nothing amiss, no evidence of surveillance or wiretapping as he claimed. Furthermore, there were reports that Katagiri's wife had even separated from him due to his strange behavior. Yet astonishingly, Japan Airlines remained unaware of these events, and Katagiri himself concealed his illness to continue flying. In November 1981, after his leave ended and eager to return to work, Katagiri effortlessly passed the airline's exams, and was cleared to fly the DC-8 as a captain. This is a crucial detail to remember as it plays a pivotal role in today's events. As for the reason why, let's continue with the flight. 7.30 a.m. 166 passengers were seated on the plane. Flight attendants conducted final safety checks and briefings before takeoff. In the cockpit, the crew completed their checks and started the engines. Everything proceeded normally, except for First Officer Ishikawa's nagging feeling that Captain Katagiri wasn't quite right. Captain, are you feeling all right? Thank you. I'm fine. Just then, they received a call from Fukuoka Air Traffic Control. JAL 350, this is Fukuoka. Are you ready for departure? Fukuoka, JAL 350, ready for departure. JAL 350, clear for takeoff on runway 16. Have a safe flight. At 7:34 a.m., JAL 350 received clearance for takeoff from runway 16. With the roar of the engines, the plane slowly taxied onto the runway and gradually accelerated. Less than a minute later, it smoothly ascended into the sunlit sky, heading northeast towards Tokyo. During the initial moments of the journey, all passengers followed the crew's safety instructions as the plane climbed. Everything was proceeding smoothly according to plan. Thanks to favorable weather and tailwinds, the DC-8 effortlessly reached each altitude assigned by air traffic control. At 7.54 a.m., just 20 minutes after takeoff, Captain Katagiri brought the plane to its cruising altitude of 29,000 feet, as initially filed. Once the plane stabilized at cruising altitude, passengers began to relax. The crew continued to monitor the systems, ensuring everything was on track. On the control panel, all parameters remained stable, confirming a smooth flight. The JAL-350 crew maintained their focus, piloting the aircraft with precision. Outside, the sky was clear, promising a calm journey. The flight progressed without any signs of trouble. At 8.22 a.m., 48 minutes after takeoff, the plane was just 100 miles south of Tokyo. Receiving instructions from air traffic control, Captain Katagiri descended to 16,000 feet and then further to 3,000 feet in preparation for landing. Up to this point, everything had been going perfectly. At 8.38 a.m., JAL-350 began its approach to Tokyo's Haneda Airport. Unlike its modern, expansive counterpart today, Haneda Airport in 1980 was undergoing major expansion and renovation, leaving only two runways in operation. Runway 15 left, 33 right, and runway 422. At 8.39 a.m., JAL-350 was cleared for an ILS approach to runway 33 right. Approaching from the south meant the captain would have to fly over the waters of Tokyo Bay. The landing gear was lowered, followed by the deployment of flaps at a 50-degree angle. Three minutes later, at 8.42 a.m., the DC-8 descended to 1,000 feet at a speed of 130 knots. The destination was within reach for all passengers and crew. 
It seemed like another routine landing was imminent. However, it was at this very moment that the first signs of trouble emerged. 8.43 a.m. 500 feet. As usual, First Officer Yoshifumi Ishikawa informed the captain that they had descended to 500 feet. However, the response was silence. The captain offered no acknowledgement, deviating from Japan Airlines standard operating procedures. Assuming the captain hadn't heard, the first officer repeated the call. 300 feet. Still, there was no reply from the captain. 56 seconds later, the radio altimeter's warning sounded, and flight engineer Yoshimi Ozaki announced they had reached the decision height of 164 feet above the water below, maintaining a speed of 130 knots. Typically, the captain would call out landing or go around, but once again, silence prevailed. At this point, the first officer sensed something was amiss. He turned to see Captain Katagiri trembling, his forehead drenched in sweat as if gripped by fear. Hallucinations flooded the captain's mind. He was convinced that Japan was under Soviet occupation, divided into two factions and forced into a bloody war. Katagiri believed he had to become a kamikaze pilot, crashing the plane into the enemy. He would rather die than be captured alive. His hands remained on the controls but he seemed lost in his delusions. He muttered incoherently, no, not me. Yeah, what's your name? Not what's your name? me. Captain, are you okay? We need to land. Before First Officer Yoshifumi Ishikawa could finish his sentence, the captain abruptly disengaged the autopilot, pushed the yoke forward, and reduced the throttle to idle. The plane's nose pitched down, rapidly losing altitude. Flight engineer Yoshimi Ozaki noticed the sudden change and shouted, We're losing power! But Katagiri seemed oblivious, continuing his actions while repeatedly saying, Stay away from me! Stay away from me! He then activated the thrust reversers on engines number two and three, a system designed to slow the plane after landing. Following this series of irrational actions, the DC-8 virtually lost all thrust, effectively becoming a powerless glider. Engineer, quick! Please help me, this bastard's gone crazy! Instinctively, the first officer pulled back on the yoke to counteract the captain's actions, while flight engineer Yoshimi Ozaki leaped from his seat to restrain the hysterical captain. Both the first officer and the flight engineer were in disbelief. They couldn't fathom why the captain would endanger himself and everyone on board. In the cabin, passengers panicked as they felt the plane's unusual movements and changes in direction. Oh my god, what's happening? This isn't the airport. The plane's about to crash into the water. What's going on? The head flight attendant, recognizing the gravity of the situation, tried to contact the cockpit but failed due to a severed communication line. He immediately ordered the other flight attendants to assist passengers in putting on life jackets and provided essential instructions for emergency evacuation. He also used his skills to keep everyone calm, urging them to remain patient while they awaited rescue. The passengers gradually calmed down. Just moments ago, everything had been fine. They were ready to land. Now, they held their breath as their plane hurtled toward disaster. It all happened so fast that many couldn't even comprehend what was unfolding. Back in the cockpit, the situation remained dire. The captain continued to sob uncontrollably while the other two crew members fought desperately to save the plane from a watery grave. Tragically, their efforts proved futile in those crucial moments. At 8.46 a.m., the DC-8 plunged into the shallow waters surrounding Tokyo Bay, near the mouth of the Tama River, south of the airport, just 500 meters from runway 33 right. As the plane impacted the water with its right side, the main wing was torn off, and even more critically, the nose completely separated from the fuselage, creating a rupture starting from row 12. Many passengers seated in the front were severely injured, with some thrown from the wreckage and killed instantly. However, there was a glimmer of hope. Thanks to the first officer's last-ditch efforts, 
the plane had landed in a shallow bay where the tide had just receded, leaving the water depth at just over a meter. This minimized the impact force. The tail section remained largely intact, resulting in only minor injuries and psychological trauma for some passengers there. At Haneda Tower, the air traffic controllers were in disbelief. The plane that had just contacted them for landing clearance was now submerged in water, not on runway 33 right as instructed. They exclaimed, What the hell happened to JAL-350? In the cockpit, all three crew members were injured after the harrowing crash. Upon realizing he had survived, the first officer couldn't contain his anger. Damn it! What the hell have you done? But the captain, still dazed, sat in his seat, tears streaming down his face. I saved them. I saved them. No one could understand Katagiri's actions or his thoughts at that moment. Perhaps in his delusional state, he genuinely believed he had done the right thing. At 8.50 a.m., four minutes after the crash, the fire department received notification from Haneda Air Traffic Control. However, it took another 20 minutes for rescuers to arrive at the scene, as many firefighters were still dealing with the aftermath of a major fire the previous day. Fortunately, local fishermen witnessed the crash and, despite the risks, used their boats to initiate the first rescues. Upon reaching the scene, a large amount of fuel was pumped out of the plane to prevent an explosion. It took over three and a half hours for all passengers to be evacuated onto lifeboats and transported to safety. At this point, I'm sure you're all wondering who started all this. Where is Captain Katagiri? The captain was among the first to escape the plane and board a rescue boat. It was later discovered that he had identified himself as an office worker and allegedly removed his uniform to avoid being recognized as a crew member. This cowardly act was met with widespread condemnation in Japan, a country known for its discipline and spirit of mutual aid. Investigation and Findings The JAL-350 crash claimed the lives of 24 of the 174 people on board. Many others were injured and Japan Airlines suffered significant losses. This was Japan Airlines' first fatal accident of the 1980s. Initial findings indicated good weather conditions and no signs of mechanical failure, leading investigators to focus on the flight crew. Analysis of the cockpit voice recorder shocked the investigators with its revelations. They heard Captain Katagiri's loud cries before the plane's descent, suggesting a severe psychological issue. There had been no prior signs of conflict or arguments among the crew, Captain Katagiri was later found at a temporary shelter. Meanwhile, the other crew members were hospitalized with injuries, which hindered the investigation's progress. Further investigation revealed that the plane's engines had been put into reverse thrust before the crash. Through psychological profiling during interrogations, they concluded that Captain Katagiri had intentionally attempted to crash the plane by manipulating the engines, causing it to plummet. A subsequent investigation determined that the captain had experienced a mental breakdown during the final stages of the flight. As mentioned earlier, Katagiri had taken a year off due to depression. It appeared that his illness had relapsed during the landing approach, leading to his erratic behavior and speech. This was considered the most plausible explanation for his bizarre actions. However, in the trial following the crash, Katagiri was found not guilty and cleared of all charges due to his mental state at the time of the incident. Investigations later revealed that he had been diagnosed with schizophrenia before the crash. Katagiri was not imprisoned for his actions. Instead, he was admitted to a psychiatric hospital and merely fired by Japan Airlines. According to an investigation by the digital media company Ozi, the captain was released from the hospital and, as of 2015, was living with his wife in a two-story house near Mount Fuji in Kanagawa Prefecture. Japan Airlines faced severe criticism for allowing an unstable pilot to operate the aircraft and for using unethical media tactics to manipulate public opinion. Learning from this incident, Japanese officials established the Aviation Medical Center at Haneda Airport in 1984 to implement daily health management and regular medical checks for pilots, with a particular focus on mental health. 
Following the incident, Japan Airlines permanently retired Flight 350. In short, Captain Katagiri's actions in this story were completely intentional, not an unintentional mistake. The police later revealed another shocking piece of information. The incident of JAL Flight 350 was avoidable and had been predicted in advance. The day before the crash, during a flight from Haneda to Fukuoka, Captain Katagiri exhibited unusual behavior. While the plane was on the runway awaiting takeoff clearance, Katagiri was impatient to get airborne. Additionally, immediately after takeoff, the plane was scheduled to make a right turn at 250 knots with a 25-degree bank angle. However, Katagiri banked the plane at nearly 70 degrees, exceeding the maximum allowable limit by 40 degrees. Fortunately, the first officer noticed and corrected the maneuver. However, due to the excessive bank angle, the plane entered a side slip and lost 800 feet of altitude in just 15 seconds. Although the passengers expressed their concerns and fears, the rigid hierarchy and conservative thinking in Japanese society at that time led co-pilot Ishikawa to hesitate and not report the incident. Had the captain been given medical leave, perhaps the tragedy could have been avoided.